All right, everybody, it's come to this. And I can't believe, can't believe I have to do this after this game. Oh, my goodness. And, and you know what? This bag is well-deserved. That was horrible. That was absolutely horrible. But you know something? I can't have too long of that. Seriously. I mean, how do people wear these things all the time? Well, back to actually the real hat since my hair isn't exactly camera ready. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great hockey content and an entertaining interactive podcast. So check us out in our library of videos. And hi, everybody. It's still Ranger season, no matter how you want to look, look at it. I am your host, Mark Williams on Big Apple Hockey. And, well, no way to cut it. Last night, the Rangers lose 7-2. Uh, they, they were definitely not the best team on the ice. There is no argument. There is no, hey, if this was a fight card, they would have stopped it. <laughs> But it didn't seem like it was going to be that way. Uh, so Sturkin made a couple saves uh, opening up the game, and Alexei Lafreniere scored his first ever playoff goal. And it was it, – it, it kind of was an indication. Uh, Steve uh, – Stepway Steven and I, we were talking about that. Lafreniere is a guy that really needs to get off the schneid. Really, Mika's advantage and needs to get off the schneid. And then um, – you know, Rangers are up one nothing. Things are going good. Then Patrick Demeth has to high stick Jason Zucker, and Penguins go to the power play. Sidney Crosby gets a goal. It was yet another. I'm going to use the word controversial when I put that one in quotes. Uh, goal that was allowed. It was done through video review. It was a goal. The ESPN camera angle was able to pick it up. Reasonably speaking, yes. The so could probably stopped the puck, and then his momentum took himself back into the net. And he is moving way too much right now in this series. And that just tells you that he has very little confidence in the team around him and himself. So perhaps it might be time to start playing Georgiev the rest of the way. I still think you got to go with Sturkin. He's the one that got you there, but it's he's he's not playing well. And he just looks gassed mentally and physically. And you saw him standing in the runway at the end of the game or the end of the period, the second period, I think. And you just thought this, this, I don't, uh, he's, he's not going back in. He knows he's not going back in. And I, I think personally speaking, I think you have to run him back out there because if you don't, then it's what lessons are you really teaching him? Because he really matters. Alexander Georgiev doesn't matter. So Sturkin is the franchise. I always love the comparison when people are going, oh, you got to go with Sister, uh, Georgiev now. No, go with Sturkin. Rangers down 3-1 in the series. They're not looking good in any way. So Sturkin needs to be their best player, and he's going to be an MVP candidate. This is a rookie. This is a rookie feeling his, his way through a career. And the evidence I'm going to give you with that is here are Henrik Lundqvist's numbers from 2005, 2006. Henrik Lundqvist was nominated for, I'm oh, sorry, was a, was a Vesna Trophy finalist. I always want to say nominated because I always think it's nominations, but, um, but uh, he was fourth in the Calder voting as well. I was fourth. I still can't believe that one. But even though that is the most stacked rookie class of all time, Looking at his numbers right here, 2.24 goals against and 9.22 save percentage. He goes to the playoffs, gets shellacked by the New Jersey Devils. His save percentage drops uh, almost 100 points and his goals against nearly doubles. That was 53 games he played in. Igor Sesterkin played in 53 games for the first time this season. And you can look at his playoff numbers his goals against has doubled more so than that. And the save percentage, though, being uh, a 9 0 5, that actually, I think that reflects more of the triple overtime, which may or may not have cost the Rangers in different ways. And I've made the arguments that the triple overtime is a blessing and a curse for both teams. 
but it's really benefited the Pittsburgh Penguins, obviously, because I think it just took the Rangers out, mentally speaking. And the Rangers could come back, win game five, and then all they got to do is win game six and four is game seven. Uh, 30 teams have come back from 3-1 deficits in the NHL playoffs, but it's at, I believe, 30 out of 322, so it's less than 10%. Uh, or Yeah, less than 10%. It's it's just it's very difficult, but you got to do it one game at a time. Two of those teams, the 2014 New York Rangers against Pittsburgh Penguins and the 2015. Now, I still think this series is just it it, it should be two two. I still don't think that goal should have been disallowed in Game One, and I get it's it might sound like bitching, but you know something after looking at last night, Penguins. There is no complaining if the Penguins win this series now. If the Penguins win this series, they did it. They did it on their own merits. So, in the second period, tied one-one, the Penguins get a goal from Matheson, and then 18 seconds later, Jake Gensel scores his fifth goal of the series. That's his fifth in four games. And the only person I have to say to that, paging John Drews. The Drews is loose, if you remember him, Ranger fans. That was back in the 80s when he was with the Washington Capitals, and he had, I believe it was nine goals in a playoff series against the New York Rangers. It was absolutely disgusting. And in the late 90s, uh, the Flyers picked him up, just knowing he could possibly help them beat the Rangers, and I believe he did in 1997. So, the Druce was loose. Uh, I have to double check on that one, because I, I just wanted to mention John Druce, show up a little bit of knowledge. But the other thing that's obvious about this team is that the injuries have taken its toll, and that the Rangers, minus Goodrow and Mott, have not been the same with their bottom six, especially their fourth line, which was really good. Who knows? Maybe Mock can get back for game five. Hard to say. And maybe uh, Goudreau's week to week. So uh, I, there's, I think Sam was saying he was skating yesterday. I don't know. I was working. So I, I had to still run around. Tried to pay attention and soak in as much as I could. But it just, th this, this game was a tough one. It was very tough. To just deal with. And the reason why I'm recording this is because I have got four hours of sleep and I need to take a little nap right now because it is not, <laughs> I can't do a full, a full chat right now. Um, you can see most of my chat pregame with uh, Step Boy Steve and Rangers Review and check them out, him and Tyler over on Rangers Review. And it's, it's just it, this. This team is possibly one of those teams. I could see their warts. I'll, I'll say it like this, but it's very difficult to take this because they're not this bad compared to the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Penguins are much better than, than what this is. They had an 8 9 2 record after the trade deadline. They were under 500, NHL 500. This was. This is a bit of an aberration. And yes, the again, the disallowed goal has something to do with it. Whether you want to, you, whether you're on Pittsburgh's side on this one, go right ahead. You guys want to hammer at me in the comments, go right ahead. Don't give me just just don't give me like ridiculous answers about it's being wah. Bring us bring discussion to this. Why should that have been a disallowed goal? He was clearly pushed in. Brian Dumoulin makes the contact, and you can see that in the replay. And every analyst said so, except for Mark Messier. But even the Messier horse can see that it was uh, that it was a push. And by the way, uh, the, technically speaking, if it was Messier running in the Kentucky Derby like he did, it should have been a moose, since that was his nickname. Anyway, um. But all excuses, all all excuses aside, Penguins right now they got the series on lockdown. If there is a game six, uh, I think the New York Rangers are going to have to give them all they got. Now, 
Zabanajad and Kreider have faced elimination. Panarin, uh, I think he won a game in the second round with uh the with a with a, the black oh no, actually he played with the Blackhawks too. I forgot about that one. Uh but Ryan Strom, you you're playing for a contract, remember that. Uh, Andrew Kopp knows that. Andrew Kopp has played for a contract and he's gonna get it. So I, I as as I'm trying to collect my thoughts on all this, it's 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 a lot more difficult. Because I start obviously I had the Rangers at five, and a lot of it had to do with Igor. And the Penguins in the regular season series scored four goals on Sisterk in total. They have scored four goals in game one, the first period of game three, and the second period of game four. That is not going to cut it no matter who your goalie is. So, and I know the people that are trying to say, oh, oh, now fire Galan, get rid of Galan out of there. No, the Rangers are going to have some cap problems next year. And by the way, Gerard Gallant is a reason for their success. So I'm not dumping Gerard Gallant. And that was a hilarious one. Uh, friends of mine texted me, oh, fire, fire Gallant and bring in Barry Trotz. To do what? Look, game five, they got to show us something. They got to see some signs of life. This went from being the 2014-2015 Rangers Penguins to the 2016 Rangers Penguins really quick. And you can see what the lack of sleep and what the series is doing to my brain. So I want you guys to leave it all in the comments down below. Uh, other than Patrick Demeth, is there another scapegoat in this series? Would you start Alexander Georgiev versus the Pittsburgh Penguins tomorrow? And uh, is it beneficial to run Sisterkin back out there? I still think you got to go with the guy that you went to the dance. Well, the, the expression is that you got to go with the girl you went to the dance with. And I, I don't think it's helpful to Sisterkin in the long term if Georgiev plays, especially since Georgiev will not be a New York Ranger in three months. So go ahead, throw it down in the comments below. If you want to check out the video with myself and Snap Boy Steven, you can check it out. I'll put the link right here. And if you want to check out talking about the Barry Trotz, uh, the firing, which I still can't believe that's even a thing, you can check that out right here. Anthony and I will be back for a full show tomorrow. Philk, we love you, and we can't wait to have you back full time with us. So just everybody hang in there with us. And, you know, the NHL playoffs is not easy. And it could be worse. You could, we could always be Nashville and already home. But and I said we for a change. Ah, I've been getting away from saying we. But the New York Rangers, they're still alive. we got to keep that in mind. Uh, I don't know how much longer, though. That's what the hard part is. Everybody, thank you very much for your support. Thanks very much for watching this video, and I will see you soon. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.